today we're going to be looking at the Cuddle Up Unicorn Blanket. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel Casualistic and hi to my new subscribers, thank you for joining me. Um, so today we're going to be looking at the Cuddle Up Unicorn Blanket. Um, this is quite a big project and um, depending on what size you make um, so it's taken me a little while to do this one bit of a saga attached to it but we'll go into that later on in the video um, so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fit this all on camera because I'm sort of as far away from the camera as I can get and it's not even zoomed in so this is what it looks like um, I will explain why the hood is a separate, separate colour <laughs> as we go along um, so basically this is a corner to corner blanket I'm just sort of trying to, as you can see, it's <laughs> absolutely enormous. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know how much you can see because I couldn't see past the blanket there, but hopefully you saw most of it. Um, I'll try and do, I think what I might do is take a picture of it at the end so you can see it as, as a full, full thing. Um, so this is my first ever corner to corner blanket. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, if you're more of, you know, you've been crocheting for a while, will have done this. And a lot of beginners do often sort of start with this uh, style of blanket. Um, I had tried it a couple of times in the past, but I can never get past the first three blocks. I just, I think I wasn't using the right yarn, the right hook, and it just didn't work for me. So, um, when I, yeah, basically this, this time it worked. I really enjoyed doing it up to a point, which I'll explain. Um... So it's a, I really I really loved doing this project as as a whole. Um, so <clears throat> the, I'm really stumbling on my words today. I'm really sorry. I'm a little bit tired. It's been a manic week. Um, so this is called the Cuddle Up, Cuddle, Cuddle Up Unicorn Blanket. Um, it's by Tamara Kelly, um, who's also known as the Mo Mowgli Blog. Um, so I actually saw this on uh, Facebook quite often because I follow her on Facebook. Um, so the patterns quite often uh, thingy come up on my newsfeed. So there we go, card like unicorn blanket. So this is what hers looked like. Um, so there you, you get the gist of, of what it's looked like. And, and you have these pockets in both sides. She's got that obviously folded over for, for the picture. Um, now I'm just going to tell you what yarn she used because obviously me being me, I change things up. Um, so for her uh, blanket she used a lime brown pound of love which is um, a worst of weight yarn for those of you in the US um, for UK it would be Templar it says um, she used colours bubblegum and lavender um, and she used different well it depends on what size you do as to how many balls you use um, if you're doing the smallest size you'd only need one ball of each colour um, if you're doing the bigger sizes, then you would need two balls of bubblegum. So that's kind of basically what I'm going to tell you. Um, so, um, what I used, I used a six and a half millimetre hook. Um, I like working with the chunky ones because projects work out quicker, don't they? Now the yarn I used, when I saw the picture, um, I got very, very inspired. Um, you know when you just think, I've got something in my stash that I can use. Um, so, because I think because it was pink as well, it kind of what inspired me, and I thought, I know, I I remembered that Pearl had sent me quite a few balls of um, this particular pink yarn that's got the little blue and green flecks in it. So I thought that would give it a little bit of texture and interest. So the yarn that I've used is uh, called Teddy uh, Teddy Soft Spot Baby Double Knitting. So there's the ball band for you. And the shade colour is 9842. Now all the yarns I've used are all 100% acrylic, just in case I forget to say. Um, now the balls, uh, these, the teddy yarn I've used, um, they're all 295 metres, um, just to help you calculate. Now I had five balls of that yarn and I ran out. Um, those of you that follow me on Facebook will have seen I've put a plea up asking if anyone had any in that particular shade 
or whether they knew anywhere I could get some. Um, so those of you that tried to help me, um, Jane who went and looked on her local market stall, uh, there was loads of you, um, too many to name really, but I just want to say thank you to everyone that tried to sort of help me resolve the problem. Unfortunately none of us were able to find any online or you know out, out in the physical world. Um, so I've had to fudge it very slightly. Um, I don't think it's too noticeable um, what I've had to do but it is it's noticeable to me whether it be as noticeable to you that's a, that's going to be the test isn't it um so what i had to do um what i did with the yarn and the reason why i went through so much yarn was i because it was a worsted weight and i only had double net i decided to um double strand it so i worked with two strands at the same time that's why i went through so much yarn but it has made it really nice and thick and it's a really warm blanket but it feels really soft as well now where I ran out of yarn I actually had to frog um, now this is the, the other thing I'm really bad for I don't very often do tension test to check my tension against the patterns nine times out of ten most patterns it doesn't matter uh, for the sort of things that I make unless I'm making clothing then I do check um, and I didn't check my tension on this and although I, I followed the pattern for the three to four years old the pattern um, comes in three sizes um, there is for the three to four year old I'm just trying to make sure I get this correct just find the right page um, yeah for a three to four year old a five to six year old or a seven to eight year old now I followed the pattern for the three to four year old um, and when the point when I ran out of yarn uh, for the main colour um, I then checked my size against the pattern and my pat mine came out at the size of a seven to eight year old um, so I ended up because we couldn't find any more yarn I had to frog it back a phenomenal amount and basically redo it so the places where I've increased and decreased on either side are slightly different to her pattern so mine has come out very slightly different shape and size to her pattern so for her pattern for the size at three to four um, it should come out at 28 inches by 36 now because I've had to frog it back and I only wanted to frog it back so far because you know it's very disheartening I'm sort of struggling not to cry as I did it because I was really really enjoying the project um, it's just such a shame because it kind of spoilt it when I ran out of yarn um, but mine has come out, uh, it's supposed to be a rectangle shape, mine's come out more of a square um, so the across the width it's 32 and a half inches and the height is 33 so mine's very slightly different um, so the place where I had to alter things, now I don't know how well this is going to come out on camera um, oh dear <laughs> so it's not really showing I don't think on camera but basically there's a stripe across here from this point on to all this bit here what I did is I added another colour in so I don't know if you can see it's very slightly lighter here than it is there and there aren't quite so many flecks in it so what I did um, I went into my personal stash to see what I could find and the nearest colour that I could find to um, the teddy yarn was um, Mariner Double Net in the shade 046 um, in, whoop, in pink so that one 046 pink there we go and as you can see it's a pale pink so what I did was I double stranded so I used one strand of this towards the end and one strand of the teddy yarn and I had just enough to do that um, so I have ended up with a slightly different patch across here but it is at the bottom um, and I don't think any little girl is going to be particularly too bothered especially at three or four years old so um, that's the bit that I altered now for the uh, corners these bits are basically for the child to put their hands in like so and then obviously you'd have <laughs> I haven't got enough hands here and then you have the hood up over the head obviously and this would be around them so for these I actually did the um, size for the seven to eight year old um i just thought you don't actually know what age child this is going to be going for the refugee project uh, for woolly hugs 
Um, if you've not heard of Woolly Hugs, it's a charity here in the UK and I will link it, the uh, Facebook group and the website down in the description so you can check it out if you're interested. Um, so this will be going for the refugee projects. Obviously I don't know what age child it is going to go to. So um, I've made the pockets slightly bigger. They would have probably been about there if I'd um, done the smaller size. So I did do the bigger size. So you, you can mix and match with this pattern which is quite good. Now for the hood, because I ran out of the teddy yarn I've had to use a different one but I've I've gone for a bright pink um I just thought because you know unicorns are you know they have that really nice pink don't they a lot of them that you see um so for the hood um again this was yarn donated by Pearl so it's Anne Giddes baby uh, red heart yarn <coughs> probably pronounced that wrong knowing me I know somebody did tell me how to pronounce it properly so apologies should have checked before I come on camera really um, and the colour is 00702, it's a very small print just there, if it will focus. I think that's as focused as it's going to get, but it's 00702, so it's this lovely pink. So um, I've used, I'd say about three quarters of a 100 gram skein for that. Um, so the hood is actually made as a, a rectangular piece, believe it or not. Now, as I was making it, I did sort of think, well, how on earth is that going to work? <laughs> um, so what actually you do, you attach the hood, um, you just um, whip stitch it um, across one side. And then, it's very hard to... <laughs> I wish I had more hands. So you ended up with a rectangle like that. And then what you do is you fold this bit down and that bit down and then you join that seam there. So that's what's happened here is there is actually a seam here um, that you then whip stitch and it creates this hood. So I thought that was really quite clever and it was really simple because it was just a, a rectangle to make. Um, the horn and the, well, the, the back of the ears are obviously done in the same red heart. Um, the ears are worked, the main part of the ears are worked actually in the round um, and then you just flatten them. Um, so it's basically um, single crochets in US terms, double crochets in UK terms um, and then you flatten it out and uh, then you create the inner piece and this is mainly um, US double crochets, UK trebles. Um, I'm not going to go into too much because I don't want to breach copyright. Um, but you basically create a triangle shape. It is very, very simple. And then you stitch it on. I mean, both both the ears are identical. And then you just place them on and um, stitch them on. I actually placed them on with stitch markers and tied them on just to make sure I'd got them even, sort of worked it out so where the middle was. And then the horn, um, again, it's done it in the lilac, like for the centre of the ears. Um, and uh, this is just worked in the round using back loop only and you just basically creating a, a cone shape uh, so it's basically increasing every so many rows and then you'll have straight rows of single crochet US terms, double crochet UK terms. Um, I did debate whether to stuff this and um, the pattern doesn't say to and I did think about stuffing it so it would really sort of stick out like that um, but then I was thinking about um, you know, it's going to charity, things need to be able to be packed quite tightly and flat. So I've decided to do it flat in the end. So I've sewn it on flat, so that's roughly where I've put it, sort of just a little bit further down from the back of the hood. Um, but I think it looks pretty cute. You know, once you've got your head in there, it'll still stick out. So, and even though this is for a three to four year old, it actually does fit over my head, believe it or not. Um, the edging... Um, that goes all the way around um, is um, US single crochets in between the gaps of each block chain two single crochet into or double crochet if you're in the UK and that's all you do all the way around it's a really really simple border it looks really really effective um, these were worked um, with increases, I think it was both sides, I'm trying to remember now, let me check. Trouble is, I've moved on to other projects, so I, my brain starts forgetting what I've just done, even though I only finished it a few days ago. Um, I 
I do apologise. Never find things when you want though, can you? Um, yeah, so, um, for the, for the corners, you basically do the first, it's basically eight rows, um, if you're doing the smaller size, um, well, they're all eight rows, but they're all, all done, no, actually, sorry, I tell a lie, I've done this row, uh, size seven to eight, so I did, um, ten rows, but the others, the smaller sizes are eight rows or nine rows, so it just it's just an extra row, um, depending on which one you do. Um, so you work the first few rows with increases either side, and then um, you do a row where you double crochet into the first stitch. This is in US terms, so it'll be treble in UK, half double in the next stitch, um, which would be half treble, and then you single crochet, and you basically repeat that across, and then um, you single and you just repeat that right the way across and it creates this um, triangle and then you single crochet or double crochet if you're in the UK um, on the final row and it creates this triangle. It's really, really simple. It sounds really complicated but it is really, really simple. Um, if you've never done corner to corner before, um, the stitches you'll need to know are um, US double crochets, which is UK trebles, um, chain three or chain six. Um, so that's the formula that I've used. So the increased sides I've done at uh, starting chain of chain six and then working into the fourth chain and creating uh, three double crochets into that chain and working from there. Um, so it is actually quite a simple thing to do. If you've never done corners corner, um, everyone raved about it and I was a bit kind of can't be that great. I really, really enjoyed doing this. Right to the point I ran out of yarn and then it was just frustration and frogging and stuff. Once I got back into it and I was, you know, making the hood and stuff, I did really enjoy it again. So I do really, really recommend um, doing this. It's a really enjoyable project. It's lovely if you've got a little girl to make it for. Um, and it's just so adorable. Um, I think it would have come out a little bit better if I'd had enough yarn to do the hood in the same colour. But hey, little girls, they love pink, so I don't think they'll be overly worried. Um, the purple yarn, in case you're wondering, is actually a ball of yarn that Pearl did send me um, that came without a label. Um, it's definitely an acrylic. I don't know any more than that. It is quite soft. Um, this is the amount that I had left. So again, I've used about three quarters um, of a skein of yarn. Um, so you need, it, do, it does, if you double strand it, it does eat a lot of yarn. Of course, you could just use um, an Aran weight yarn if you're in the UK. Um, which is a bit closer to, to the Worcester Bait in the US. Obviously, if you're in the US, you'd have Worcester Bait yarn anyway. Um, but yeah, so um, I've used quite a few skeins, but um, I think I really do um, love how this has come out. Um, I will confess I haven't blocked this yet, um, but I was so excited to show you I couldn't wait. <laughs> the weather hasn't been, been a bit unpredictable for how long it's going to take to dry, so I could have ended up with nothing to show you on camera. Um, yeah, so... There we go. So it's um, a really lovely project. Um, I really have enjoyed it. It's an, quite a big blanket, but um, it's lovely and soft. And I really, th I, I think a little girl's going to be happy with that. I'd have been happy with that as a little girl. So, and I wasn't a girly girl. I was a bit of a tomboy when I was younger. So, um, if I would have been happy with that, I'm sure anyone else would be. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so that's it for the craft section. Um, Life update, well, first of all, I just want to say apologies for the fact that it's only one uh, video this week. Um, unfortunately, the beginning of my week was um, a lot more manic than I expected. There was a lot of things going on, um, and I just didn't have time to record at the beginning of the week, otherwise I would have done so. Um, very pleased to report that the scaffolding is down. Um, our neighbour who lives beneath us had been chasing the landlord um, over the the end of last week beginning of this week um, and we got to Wednesday and I said to her that if it hadn't of um, if it hadn't have been by then then I would chase it I'm an ex-PA so I kind of know how to uh, motivate people politely um, so I rang the landlord had a big moan um, and yeah they came that afternoon and took the scaffolding down so that was on Wednesday um, so we're now scaffolding free um, we've had some issues with the neighbour, those of you who've been with me for a while will know that there's a neighbour in, in the next door block who um, is elderly, is having some, um, 
some issues. We don't know if she's got dementia, if it's just mental health problems or what. Um, she has a history of stealing. Um, so my neighbour downstairs tells me um, that she, she knows, she's known her for 20 years and she's always been a bit of a, a sort of thief. Um, but since um, she's become unwell, it has exacerbated. So we did have a big drama because uh, our neighbour downstairs, who we're friends with, um, had a watering can in the garden. It's a communal garden. And said lady went um, and stole it. And our neighbour saw her take it and confronted her. So there was a big argument. So we've had lots of drama here this week. So there's been all that sort of thing goes on. There was actually two arguments between them uh, over that. Um, so yeah, we've had that going on. Um, we got to see my friend's niece. Um, we used to have her four days a week. We very rarely get to see her now. Um, so we got to see her on Tuesday. She drew me a beautiful picture of a rainbow with lots of hearts saying she loves me. So that was lovely. So I've got that on the fridge now. Um, I, what else have I been doing? Gosh, it's been such a busy week. It's hard to remember. Um, I've been catching up with my one of my um, friends. Um, she's now gone home, so I got to see her a couple of times and got for lunch. So that was really really nice. And um, yesterday I spent um, about three hours on my shed roof at, back at my mum's. Um, I had a shed built before was it, this was before I moved um, out. Um, which is my craft shed, my girl shed. Um, I will show that at some point. I need to pull everything out and give it a good clean because um, everything's got a bit muddled. I keep chucking stuff in there and pulling stuff out. And, um, it needs a, a big sort out, so I want to sort it out and, you know, make it look better before I, I, I show you guys. And I don't know if I'm going to get time to do that this summer. So um, I've been up on the shed roof um, because um, I don't know if you remember a few months back we had some very high winds and the felt on the roof had actually ripped off at the apex and I'd had to go up in gusty winds um, and dry and just cover the bit that um, had actually ripped off so that it wouldn't be leaking too much but I have still had some leaks um, so I've now got one side of the roof done I'm I've never done this before so uh, whether it's going to work I don't know um, and because my mum lives on a hill the shed the ground around the shed is um, very uneven so even trying to get a ladder to get up there is is quite difficult so my friend um, had to hold the ladder for me so um, she's very very tired today um, I'm quite bruised I, I don't know why but when I lean on something that my body's not used to um, I I know you, everyone thinks I'm quite slim but I used to be a lot skinnier um, than I am now um, I was very underweight for a lot of years um, but since I've put on weight that got to the size that I am now I find if I lay, lean on anything that's got sort of a hard surface I bruise really easily um, so where I was leaning on the ladder and on the shed um, I've got bruises all the way down either side of the tops of my legs and across my derriere um, so I'm, I'm feeling a bit uh, sore today but I have got half of the shed roof done so I've just got the other half to do so I'm hoping that we're going to not have rain for a while and maybe I can get the other side done before the winter. That's the plan, but we'll have to wait and see what the weather does. But I just got the side done um, and mum had a bit of guttering that she needed me to check. Um, it's quite high up and my mum's in her 70s. So um, I got up and I there was um, lots of dirt and rubbish in the gutter. So I pulled it out where there was a problem. Um, and the heavens open so if I tried to do the other side of the shed I would have got well it, I wouldn't have been able to finish it because I would have got soaked so and there was even a clap of thunder as I was doing the guttering and uh, I was up a metal ladder so that was a little bit of a hairy moment um, so we got that done so um, yeah so um, I'm hoping next week to finish that job off and then uh, we need to do a mass uh, thing on mum's garden so the reason I'm telling you this is um, there will definitely be a video on Tuesday. I don't know whether there will be one at next weekend or not. I will try and do one and I will try and keep my normal schedule up. Um, but because I'm trying to... Sorry, I forgot to put my tablet on silent. All these beeps in the background. I apologise really bad. I normally turn it, turn it off. I forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I just don't know what my uploading schedule is going to be for the next couple of weeks. Um, autumn is fast approaching there are a lot of jobs that I need to get done um, that are important to get done before the winter I need to create a shed 
um, I need to help mum do all the pruning and mum has an absolutely enormous garden. Um, what I might do is take the camera with me so you can actually see the garden and see uh, what a mammoth task um, we've got. Um, mum got a very behind with the garden because if you remember she had, she was very unwell for, for well it was a, a, about two or three months. So we're kind of playing catch up on everything we've had so much rain everything just as fast as we're cutting stuff back it's growing so um I, I want to try and spend some time next week doing that providing the weather allows me so depending on what the weather does will depend on how many videos you get next week um i might be able to get some small projects done um i've got something in mind so if i can get that done you should still get two uploads but i'm just not guaranteeing it so just bear with me um soon as we hit autumn and we're indoors more then my schedule shouldn't be a problem um it's just one of those things you know summer there's lots of outside jobs to be done and i need to get them done obviously before the winter comes um yeah so it's been a really really busy week a good week but but very busy and i'm very very tired so hence why i've waffled for 25 minutes <laughs> my apologies if you're still with me give me a thumbs up and say I survived at the end in, put it in the comments so I know you made it to the end <laughs> anyway so I'm going to stop here um, so the next video will be um, um, I can't remember if it's called an, it's either a cowl or an infinity scarf I can't remember what, it, what she called it um, it's another pattern by the Mowgli blogs of course I will put uh, this pattern in the link for that down in the description I'll also put links down in the description for the corner to corner tutorials that I used um, there was two different ones I used um, I started with Tamara Kelly who wrote the pattern um, started with her she went a bit quick on either sides of the increase and decrease um, so I then switched to Jada and Stitches, um, who I found much easier to understand. So I'm going to put both those down. So if you've never done corner to corner, um, they'll be down in the description so that you can find them. So you know what I've been working with as well. Um, so that's it. Uh, what are you working on? Are you thinking about Christmas? I'm starting to think about what I need to make. And my camera decided to cut me off. I'm not doing very well today. <laughs> yeah, it won't record. It only records for a set amount of time. Uh, and I just tired myself out without realising it. So anyway, um, I was saying I will put the um, tutorials that I've used down in the description box. Hopefully you caught all that. Um, and yeah, so what are you working on uh, where you are? Um, I'm starting to think about Christmas. And uh, I haven't got much further than that. Um, yeah, I can't believe I'm thinking about Christmas. But we are, aren't we? As crafters, we have to start in the summer. So yeah, I've got to start planning projects. For presents and projects for you guys to see on camera um so i've got to do lots of planning once i get five minutes to myself um so yeah so that's uh, where i'm gonna stop i think and um love to know what you're working on and uh you know what are you making for christmas presents or can't you tell me <laughs> um so anyway i hope wherever you are in the world that you're well and you've got you know the weather that you desire um yeah nothing else to say really i've talked myself out so i'm going to finish here um there's banging going on outside so it's a good uh, place to stop so um until next time remember to stay well happy crafting and until next time remember to stay true to yourself bye